Welcome to the Pen to Publish podcast from the two Alexas. If you're planning to pen and publish or are penning at the moment, then you're definitely in the right place. We talk all about the writing and publishing process, and we know this podcast is helping hundreds of writers all over the globe. I'm Alexa Witten, author, typesetter, and independent publisher, and I'm Alexa Tewksbury, author, editor, and proofreader. We have many writing resources for you, including our brand new pen to published website, where you can get all the show notes and guest information. We've interviewed some really interesting writers and authors. And there's also our Writers Refinery Facebook group, which is available for you to join. We love getting feedback, so do please leave us a review. And don't forget to hit subscribe so that all the latest episodes pop up in your podcast feed. So let's get started. Hi there, and welcome to the last episode of this series of the Pen to Publish podcast with me, Alexa and Alexa. And <laughs> I can actually say now that I've met Alexa. And I've met Alexa. <laughs> For those following the podcast, you probably know that we now live in the opposite ends of the country. But Alexa was starring as the lead lady in Alan Bennett's play, the lady in the van down in Torquay, where I used to go to school. I used to go to boarding school in Torquay. And I decided on a whim, because I'd surprised many other people in my circle, I decided that, you know what, I'm going to go watch Alexa in her play on her final night. So along with my superwoman action enabler hero, Sarah Jane Phelps, we decided to, as you do, drive down for the day. Not quite the day. We were there for less than 24 hours. So Sarah drove from Newcastle via Manchester, picked me up, drove all the way down to Torquay, spent the afternoon in Torquay, which was beautiful. It was a gorgeous sunny day. And then we trotted along to the Unleashed Theatre's production of A Lady in the Van. And it wasn't until the ovation at the end... (laughs) where I was making a lot of noise, that Alexa looked over, locked eyes and went, I know her. <laughs> and I think she was quite surprised. For any listeners who don't know, we, we've we never actually met. We've worked virtually for seven years. You said it was about seven, seven years. Seven years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it, we've just gradually got more and more involved with each other's work. And so <laughs> it's to actually meet face to face and I have a big hug was just it was just lovely but it was really weird because I didn't feel like I was meeting you no I felt like I I knew I knew I know you I mean we talk on the podcast Alexa helps me run the Facebook writers refinery group we talk almost weekly yes definitely over FaceTime or on Zoom So I feel like I I knew you. It wasn't, I didn't feel like I was meeting you at all. I just felt like it was that virtual being able to give you a hug, which was lovely. So it was really lovely and very special. And a big shout out to Sarah Jane, who actually, do you know what? We probably will be interviewing Sarah Jane in the future because as we were driving down, we brainstormed her title of her book, because Sarah's writing a book. We have made great strides with her uh, project. So I think we should definitely have her come and be interviewed on the podcast for oh, sure. We should, because she's one of these really clever people who has built a brand. She's built her brand for she her really business. Has. And it's, yes, yes, it was really lovely to meet her as well. And and that was, <laughs> that did feel like a meeting because because we've interacted a little on Facebook, but mostly I was just very familiar with her face on posts. Yeah. And suddenly I, 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 was, I was bowing and then I thought, I know that face in the audience. <laughs> then I thought oh yeah Yeah. it's good isn't it but that just goes show that shows how good her marketing is and we can't not shout out also to the Northern Last Lounge that we mention a lot on this podcast because it's all intertwined if if Alexa hadn't introduced me to Kylie I wouldn't know the Northern Last Lounge and if it wasn't for the Northern Last Lounge and Sarah I probably wouldn't have met you person to person Alexa so a big shout out to the Northern Last Lounge as well. But anyway, we must crack on. So this is going to be a bit of an interesting episode because 
We did have a guest lined up. Let's be fully transparent. We had a guest lined up, but unfortunately, because of their commitments, wasn't able to reach our schedule for this episode. So we promise, promise, promise this person will definitely be featured in another episode down the line. But obviously, there's a have to be a little bit of give and take of when people are available to talk to us. So this week, what we've decided, I didn't want to end on episode seven. I'm a bit of a completist. I don't like odd <laughs> numbers. So and also, we, we hadn't said goodbye properly. So. No, we hadn't. <laughs> So this episode is Alexa and I talking about a roundup of who we've spoken to over this series. We're going to give a little, a few of the key nugget takeaways because it's almost like if you don't have time to listen to all of the episodes, which I appreciate people are busy. If you listen to this episode and we highlight what we talk about, you might then go, oh, do you know what? Actually, I really want to listen to that episode. So it's almost like this is the contents of what we're doing. So it's a bit of a cheat way of finding out exactly what we're talking about. And then you can ping straight to that episode if you'd like to. And then what we're going to do going forward is we've now recorded six series of this podcast, which we have loved doing. But what we're now going to do is going forward is we're going to be recording some more petty pods and we're going to be doing feature length episodes sporadically over the year but there probably won't be another chunk or series it'll just be updated episodes either petty pods or full length ones so if you're subscribed that's great because they'll automatically appear in your feed if you don't subscribe do and then you'll be notified when there are new episodes out and i'm not sure the petty pods appear in the subscription notifications I don't think they do so you might need to I but I think you've adjusted that now Alexa haven't you because I think I, we titled it wrong I think yeah there was something to do with you had to link them to a series and because we did them kind of we interspersed them between series I hadn't been doing that unless we make a new series series seven that is the everlasting series and then you link it yes. to that maybe I don't know oh, but anyway it it'll appear in your feed yes. if you subscribe so please do and also one last plea not one last plea because we never will never stop asking but please please <laughs> please if you love this podcast go and review it makes such a difference because when people review podcasts it helps with then it almost like boosts the podcast and gives more visibility and then it means more writers can find the podcast. Anyway, without further ado, let's get cracking with what we're <laughs> going to be talking about, which is a little roundup of who we spoke to. So in our first episode, we spoke to the lovely Laura McLennan, who is the author of Don't Be Silly and Don't Be Scared. And in that episode, we definitely learned the power of what's the best that can happen. And it was all about don't be scared to share your story shy bands getting out tell the world your story and definitely the phrase of you're doing your future readers a disservice if you don't share your story and that what's the best that can happen I love the way Laura has put that because I think well I know that I'm definitely the, the other I I I tend to think the other way, you know, what's the worst that can happen? Well, the worst that could happen is, you know, it could be really bad. Yes. <laughs> but but when you turn it around and you think, what's the best that can happen here? And yeah. and think how excited that could make you feel if you think of your best possible results. And I thought that was a really great way to approach your writing. Yeah, definitely. She also talked about imposter syndrome as well, which we all suffer from. I do. Alexa, I bet you did when you were getting ready to go on the pl on stand up on the stage with imposter syndrome. I did. I did. <laughs> and how and did I... you how did you get over it? What was your how did you get over your feelings of imposter syndrome? I think I I I got sort of grabbed little bits of advice from um, different people. One of the things that Joseph Milson, actor Joseph Milson, had said to me was, it, "You're just playing. You're just playing. 
And I, I, I sort of, I kept that in my head and I thought, I really like that because when you play, if you're a child and you're playing, you're having fun. And, and I think it's that having fun was kind of key. And I thought, well, you know, I did this of my own free will. No one made me do it. And what's the point if I'm going to feel awful when I'm out there doing it? So you do get nervous. I don't think there's any way to stop the nervousness, but you have to just step onto the stage and just do your thing and trust that it'll all flow <laughs> and also so with was... writing have fun like yes. it's your book no rules you can have fun enjoy the process yes it's nervous and 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 scary but at the same time I know Laura's books have changed her life in terms of she's so proud of her books because she's got the right team also behind her to make sure that the books that are going out are the best they can be and I think when you know you're working with a really good team, they've got your back. And I think that's also important. So, you know, and I think that joy, I think if you're in, if you're, I know writing can be a slog. It can be such a slog at times that there are the days when it just doesn't flow at all. But I think if you can still try and find a joy in doing it, then that comes through, you know, that energy comes through when people are reading the words that you've written. Yeah. Exactly. She also talks about how you can get extra income from your books as well. And she also talks about the three top tips to selling your books. Mm. So if that is of interest, go and take a listen to Laura's episode. It's awesome. It's really good. And what's the best that can happen? Yes. Next episode two, we talk to Janie Burton and she is actually, Alexa, why don't you explain? Because she's more your contact than mine. She's well, she's an editor like I am. Uh, she does big picture editing as well. So structural editing, she'll do do book. What's the word? Not reviews, but she'll kind of she'll review the first few chapters and that kind of thing anyway in, in your book. Um, and she's a contract negotiator as well for traditionally publishing authors. She just had she had so many tips for what to look out for in contracts, what scams to look out for if you're looking at things like hybrid publishing. Because if you look online, wanting to get your book published, lots and lots of things will come up. And uh, But she said that some of them you, you just have to be really, really careful of because they will take a lot of money and not necessarily provide you with what you think you're getting. So, So I thought that was one of her one of her best tips really because when you're when you're starting to write you don't know you know you don't you you until you've got your team you don't really know what you're getting into on the actual publishing side so um her tips on that were really important and so she went through some contract terms as well so if anyone listening is is coming up to a point where perhaps they they've got an agent and they are being traditionally published it's it's just understanding some of the terminology in contract so that you you realize exactly what royalties you're going to be getting and when and all that sort of thing so it was a very it was a very kind of business in, side aspect yeah, I suppose very wasn't it? informative in terms of traditionally publishing which Alexa and I don't really talk about because we're not experts in that although Alexa Tewksbury has been traditionally published but hers was slightly different as she reminds us that her deals were slightly different than than the JK Rowlings of the world but I think <laughs> But I think Janie really sort of explains what she does, how she can help. And like we say all the time, if you're going to be working with anybody, make sure you have your terms in place and don't part with any money until you know either you've got references from the person you're working with, you've heard from other people who they've done business with and what their business terms are, and you're very clear with what they're offering you and what if they offer any kind of money back guarantee as well. If it looks too good to be true, I think Janie said this, if it looks too good to be true, it probably is. So don't part with any money until you've done your due diligence. So anything trad publishing and contracts, go to episode two with Janie Burton. Episode three was with Sue Kitto. She writes as S.R. Rosewarn. She's on Amazon. She's now got two books out, The Rescue and Lainey's Tale. And she talked about what first time authors skip 
And that is the self-editing process. Now, she has a lovely term for this. What was it, Alexa? Can you remember? Rinsing. Yes, I love that. Rinsing, which is, yeah, I think that's brilliant because that's, you I think it's such a big thing writing a book and it takes so much effort and so much willpower, especially if you've not got a given deadline and you're just doing it because you thought, oh, I could write a book about that. And you get to the end and think, oh, but although you might have got to the end of your story or whatever it is you're writing about, if it's a nonfiction book, that's not the end of your work, because then you need to go back over it and you might need to go back over it again three or four times just to to keep rewriting it, making it better, making the prose tighter. And so rinsing, just kind of rinsing away all the impurities. (laughs) Yeah, it's a really good term. And it's really, I mean, we talk, we we do, I do feel like I'm kind of repeating ourselves because we do. But it's interesting because I've had a couple of books come to me in the last literally in the last couple of weeks now obviously they haven't listened to the podcast obviously you can tell they haven't um (laughs) because they haven't done that no and uh, I don't know I don't know I don't know if we need to call the podcast edit your book before you send it to an editor (laughs) I don't know I don't know if that's what we need to change the podcast name to but people think that when they finish writing their book that's it you're absolutely right And they really, that's not the end. Yes, you're getting an editor on board, but an editor's job is not to take your first draft and turn it into a publishing version of your book. The editor should be seeing draft four, draft five, draft six of your book, where it's been through the rinsing process or the rinsing process side of things and in fact I think Sue Kitto even says she gets someone else to read it before she even sends it to the editor yes I think I don't know if the terminology is is confusing because you think well I've written my book and now it's going to be edited and it's the it's the self-editing that people don't understand because apart from anything else if you just look at it purely financially the less there is for your editor Mm. to do the less time it's going to take them so the less money it will cost Cost. if it arrives with the editor and it's not properly formatted and And by format we mean we don't mean typeset that's my job sorry formatted we mean for a novel that you've got your speech line like you've got your paragraph breaks for when someone new speaks you've done your best to get the inverted commas the right way round now obviously an editor does come in and help you with those we're not saying we need to have a perfectly edited formatted document that's not what we're saying what we're saying is get the basics right and by the basics we mean new speech on new lines and not all clumped in together. So I think, sorry, I didn't mean to jump on you there, Alexa, but I think it's clear that we get, I think, I think language does come into this. We know what we mean and listeners hear formatting and go, oh, does that mean I have to typeset my book? No, that's not what we're saying. We're saying for a novel that you've done the minimum preparatory work, which is, getting your book with the speech in the f- laid out correctly, which means a new paragraph for when someone new speaks. And there is a fabulous blog post, which I will link to in the show notes here about tips on how to do that. Now, obviously you might miss some, Th- that that could well happen. But what Alexa doesn't want to be doing is taking a Word document that is literally just pages of pure blocks of text where no thought has been given into that proprietary work. Sorry, I feel like I've gone on a bit of a rant there, but it's clear clear. we need to get clear on what we mean by that. Yeah. And I I think for for novels, for children's and adult novels, where you've got a plot that's developing and unraveling and coming to a conclusion it's really really important when you're when you're doing a read through of what you've written you know finish your book then if you can put it aside for a month Mm -hmm. so you come back to it with fresh eyes but then read it and just 
try to take notice of any plot flaws or anything in the timeline that doesn't work. Like if someone, this is an extreme example, but say if someone is murdered on Monday, they can't then be in Sainsbury's on Friday buying a baguette or something. And I know that sounds like, well, I wouldn't do that. But when you're writing a book, you know, if you're fitting in writing a book between a full-time job, between looking after your family, but there's a lot going on in your head. And, and you know, you might just jump a few stages or get you or jump a few stages or get confused with what, exactly where you were and it, it's really easy to do that so you need to read it through specifically checking that the plot all works that the timeline all works now the thing is that i there are structural editors who will also once you've done that they will also then go through it looking at the big picture like i said that's one of the things that Janie will do but I'm I'm a line editor. So although when I'm editing, I will also be looking out for plot flaws and anything wrong with the, the timeline or where if names have changed or anything like that. My focus is on the actual the flow of the text. So I'll be looking at how well does this read? Is there anything jarring in this sentence? It's literally going through it line by line to make sure that every single line, sentence, phrase, it all just flows together. Because if anything doesn't, it jars the reader. And as soon as you jar the reader, it kind of jolts them out of your story. Mm -hmm. So that's that's why the, the line editing aspect is so intensive but certainly certainly at the formatting as Alex has described and the getting the plot to make sure it's absolutely working those things are really really critical and in doing those things you might also think oh actually that sentence doesn't read very well if I turn it around that reads a lot better so exactly. it's, it's having patience I think isn't it you just you've written your book and I want to get my book published but it's just having patience to know that that's step one you've written your book step one which is brilliant but now you need to look at step two and step three and and you'll just end up with something far more finished far more finished yeah exactly so when we talk about formatting for a novel we don't mean laying it out for a book that's not what we mean what we mean is making sure that your reread novel as alexa has said has gone through many read throughs by yourself and or other people and that your for your formatting speech especially correctly and by that we mean making sure the punctuation to the best of your ability is in the right place and generally when people are speaking the punctuation is within the quote marks not outside there is an exception to that rule but I'm not the editor so I don't I'm not going to explain <laughs> what that is and that when someone new is speaking generally that line of tech that line of speech should go on a new paragraph also things to look out for are double spaces take them out you can do a global search get them out and generally just making sure that you're you haven't got what a lot of people use as well and this really really is frustrating is they use the space bar instead of a tab because again we have to strip that out but anyway Sue talks about that. So Sue's episode, episode three, is all about rinsing, what she does, how she goes through it. She also talks about how to sell your book as well and blog tours. So what that means in terms of getting your book out there to your audience once the book's published. It was lovely to talk mm -hmm. to Sue. She, As I said, she's written many other books. The, these two novels are her first two novels, but she's written many other books. And now it's, and also she talks about how you have to be prolific with advertising your book once it's written. Then episode four, we talked to Anne Ball, who has just got her second book, Celebrating Cacao, out. That's now available on Amazon. Alexa and I worked on her first book, How to Set Up Women's Circles, which was a beautiful book to work on. And she talked about how you, how you can use your book for business. Her business is all about women's circles, how to run them. That's what her first book was in, was a sort of an add-on to what she offers as a business. And she talks about how to use your book as a tool to get more clients in your business funnel. And it was lovely again to speak to Anne because you worked on her book as well, didn't you, Alexa? Yes. 
Yes, it, was it last year? It was last summer. It was summer. last year. Like, well, it last, was last year, year, so summer before last. Mm. Yes, yes, it was. There were lots of, um, sort of recipes in there for making potpourri and yeah. making and what to do with oils and yeah, 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 lovely book. And it does. It looks really beautiful. Yeah. But I I love the way that people create a business. I love seeing how people do that. But then when you have a book, you're you're kind of you're shouting out your expertise in that particular thing you can say look well yes I have my business I did that but look if you want to find out more about what I do here's my book yes exactly <laughs> it's, it... yeah it's a great way of of positioning yourself as an expert mm. and I know Anne's really proud of the two books that she's got that she now sells in her clinic as well in her holistic space she sells her books and I think it just backs up with what you're doing right yes. having a book just backs up your expertise so uh it was lovely working on Anne's book so her episode is episode four Anne Ball episode five was Rebecca Cole yes who has just taken her delivery of a thousand she got a thousand books printed and her book is called All Access Sewing and it is a book that is all about inclusivity, about helping people with either physical disabilities or with neurodiverse disabilities. And she explains how you can amend your clothing or alter your clothing to fit whatever disability it is you have. So if you are a wheelchair user, she shows you how to level off a skirt or she shows you how you can add a hole if you wear a uh, one of those bags. There's, it's if you have um, a, a colostomy, if you've got any kind of tube that, that needs yeah. to go to anything. She did the same with arms. If you need to be able to access your arms easily for medical treatment, yeah. how to how to shorten sleeves. Yeah. Um how, how to make to... things less tight. So yes, if you've got yes. sensory if you suffer from sensory overload or fabric that you don't like like tight collars, she shows you how to do that. And her book is amazing. And I learned so much in on her episode. In fact, a lot of people who are late diagnosed ADHD have listened to the episode and said how how well she described what she was going through because Rebecca is very late diagnosed and how it just made them feel like they weren't the only ones that were you know they a lot of people a lot of people who listened to the episode felt like they'd been masking for a long time and Rebecca explained her symptoms in a way where it just gave the listeners a feeling of, oh, this is totally how I felt. I'm glad I'm not alone. And the way she described spoons and spoon theory opened my eyes. I hyper focus on things too much, just like she was saying. And it was really interesting hearing her explain how she deals with stuff during day to day. And it was fascinating. And her episode was eye opening and just brilliant. And I think the whole the whole approach to accessibility, because the fashion industry is so, so far behind. You know, so many people have sensory issues that, you know, they can't wear certain fabrics or they can't wear certain the way clothes feel on them. They can't deal with it. And there are some some little chapters as well by by other um, sewers, sewers who yeah. have different disabilities and there's just that feeling of you know I I I can do this now for myself I can create what I need for myself because the fashion industry aren't doing it the fashion industry is not an inclusive industry and you know there are so many people out there who have this struggle with clothing. But uh, Rebecca has the whole book. I mean, you worked closely with Rebecca in the mm -hmm. layout, didn't you? So mm -hmm. it's an 
easy font for for people to read it's it's easily laid out it's yep. explained very very clearly yeah so that the book itself she calls it the ramp of sewing books and she wanted it to be accessible for people with disabilities but for people also like me who don't really have much of a clue about sewing but would love to have a go yeah so she said accessibility is only true accessibility if it's for everybody yeah so absolutely everybody and and so her ramp of sewing books I think she's achieved that brilliantly definitely the fonts are larger size as well so you you, you know most books are laid out using the 11 point rule but this one is is quite a bit bigger so it's easily read it's a lovely big format I've used colors I was very careful with the colors that we used we've used purple and greens which are all sort of purples are the color of disability so we've made sure that the each chapter is really clearly laid out so that you know what section you're in because she's divided the book up into three parts. And it's just a joy to read. And it was a joy to talk to Rebecca. And I've said to her, she needs to have her own podcast. And she's like, don't give me more stuff to do. <laughs> and I'd like to interview her again. And I think we probably will with our series seven. I think we'll definitely have Rebecca back, maybe an update of how her book's done. And also just more information about how we can make books more accessible as well. Because even the printing industry has a lot to learn about that too. So Rebecca's uh, episode five is a cracking episode so go take a listen if that's of interest episode six this was a oh. i mean all our episodes are brilliant but louise hanby within 30 seconds of her coming on the podcast i was like i know this episode is going to be brilliant she is alexa explain who louise hanby is again because she's a, a contact of yours Yes, well, Louise Hornby is an editor. Uh, she's also the chairman of the Chartered Institute of Editing and Proofreading, which is the kind of like the certified body of editors and proofreaders. You have to be working to a certain standard to be able to be part of that body. But she's just the most incredible expert. Honestly, authors listening, do listen to that episode because she will... She's a fiction editor. She specializes in crime fiction. And what she doesn't know about the kind of the mechanics of how to write is, well, it's not worth knowing what she doesn't know because she seems to know it all. She knows how to write about point of view, how you how you focus your point of view. She talks about narrative distance. She talks about show and tell so you're not over describing. She just breaks down all these little aspects of writing. The point of view one is really interesting because we talked about writing in the first person and writing in the third person and writing in that that sort of universal Weirds. yes on way. the pres on on the Omnip isn't it? Om omnipresent omniscient omniscient, omniscient or yep. omniscient yep. narrator omniscient yep. narrator and it's and it's so important whatever you choose it's so so important to stick with the point of view mm. now i obviously if you're writing as i you you have to write it from that what viewpoint because you can only write about the scenes that you're in within your story but in the third person you can sort of think well in the third person I can go anywhere and, and be any character but you still have to maintain a point of view like if you're if you're writing about say I don't know Amelia Ledworthy say and the the chapter is about is about her visiting her aunt Mildred in Sydney or something then you're you're describing her emotions and her reactions and what she's seeing and even though you're in the third person if you suddenly start describing Aunt Mildred's emotions from Aunt Mildred's point of view within the same scene it's it's a jolt mm -hmm. and as soon as you jolt the reader in any way you take them out of that flow and you take mm. them out of your story and and that spoils their enjoyment so her kind of explanation of of getting that perspective that point of view right yeah um because it's so easy to do and it's also head hopping yes it's called. head hopping it's very and some... very common and i think first time writers don't give that enough thought no or understand no no, or even think... realise they're doing it. 
<laughs> yes, yes, exactly that. Because I think you, I think you, you, you're talking about something in a scene, and then you want to talk about oh that bit, and so it's easier to just change and and do it from the other person's point of view. But you can't. It doesn't. It doesn't work. The the omniscient narrator is that I, you somehow can combine it all together. But I think even there, you have to combine it in a way where it's not going to jar the reader. But anyway, as I say, point of view, show and tell, narrative distance, yeah. those things are really, really vital to to understand and to use those the techniques yeah. for getting that right. And she, and also, she talks sorry. about that in, we talk about that with her in quite yes amount of detail, don't we? Yes. She also has lots of resources on her website, resources for editors and resources for writers. So anything that she talks about on the podcast, if you go to her website, you'll be able to find some, some there are courses, there are free resources and you know, resources that you can pay for as well. Yeah. But, but yeah, she's just a mine of information. And she talked about the Chartered Institute and it's there are a lot of editors on the Chartered Institute directory. And as I say, they have to, you have to be able to work to a certain standard to work. There's different levels that you can join the Chartered Institute. And depending on your experience and the training that you've had depends on, on how you sort of go up through the levels. But that is there to give authors the assurance that if they find an editor through the Chartered Institute's directory that they will get somebody who knows what they're doing because that's again going back to Janie Burton's episode and just be very careful who you're asking mm. to publish your book for you it's the same with editing because anyone can say that they can edit mm. anyone can say oh yeah I'll edit your book for you but if they if they don't have those skills, say, if you listen to Louise's episode and you you listen to the skills that she has, the knowledge she has in how to form writing, really, you, you realise that an editor needs to understand all those things. Otherwise, they're not going to be able to help you produce the best possible book. And, you know, there are other directories uh, as well, but I do think it's well worth researching and making sure that the editor you choose has training has experience and is also experienced in your genre of book mm -hmm. as well and, and not understands the structures your aunt mildred in sydney yes. <laughs> who was an english teacher she's not a trained editor now she can help with the first rinse we're not saying don't do that first rinse with your aunt mildred go for it good old aunt mildred good old aunt mildred <laughs> <laughs> but Aunt Mildred is not a trained editor. Now, obviously, come and inquire with us if you have a book bubbling oh, away. Please do. <laughs> but Louise also has a editing podcast. It would be remiss of us not to say oh, that yes. she has an editing podcast. It's called I, the Editing Podcast. <laughs> it's called the Editing Podcast. She has a guest page on our podcast website, the pen to publish podcast.com. She's got a guest page which tells you where to find it. So if editing is really you want to get down to the nuances of editing as well, obviously go take a listen if you want to. But Louise's is a really good overview of what you need to think about. And it is a fabulous, fabulous episode. It's been shared loads of times by writers, by editors. We know it's a corker. So if you're at that stage where you're thinking of writing a book or maybe you've started, stop, go listen to it. Make sure you understand the basics. And there you go. And then the last episode we did, episode seven, was with the lovely, oh. lovely, amazing, wonderful, beautiful human that is Paula Fowler. I have lots and lots of time for Paula. She is a champion of authors. She is a champion of what we do. She's a champion of anybody running a business, bless her. And she talked to us about how she's used a story that was told through her family and how she wanted to make that available for her kids and not just her kids, obviously now for other children to read, how she's used the local, she's really gone down the local route as in she's based her book in the Northeast and she's used famous landmarks in her book 
to pepper her story, but also she's then created activities to do with your kids once they've read the book that gets them to do free activities that encompass and include the local landmarks that she talks about. Her book is Wacky Zany Out There, Wizard Beano and Pals. I think, Alexa, once you'd spoken to her, something clicked, I think. You then kind of, didn't you sort of say with when you spoke to Paula, you're like, do you know what? I really think sometimes I need to actually have a chat with the author before I edit the book. Because, because I, I think you really, you really kind of, I don't know. I don't know if a light bulb went off, but you really clicked with Paula when you spoke to her, didn't you? Yes, because I, I, so much of my bookings and everything, it just comes through email, you know, they say, are you free to edit my book? And when would you be able to do it? And, oh, could you send me some sample pages? And it's all, it's all, so I'm in touch with the author, but I don't actually speak to them. But I think having spoken to Paula and I've edited the two books now, and there's another one on the way, isn't there, mm -hmm. of these different, of these different stories. And, and it's the fact that the, the importance of these characters to her as her as her as her legacy the importance to her of that really came through in that conversation and yeah it, it made me look differently I think at the next edit yeah so I'm sure. really glad there is another book to well, edit yeah because yes but it that, that did actually it made me realize that it would be good to talk to an author first actually actually you know physically talk to them rather than just emailing yeah because I think you get a yeah you do get overall sense mm. of what the aim is and I think also with Paula again her book is about inclusivity yes. but in a really subtle way because one of the characters is a non-gender specific character they are referred to as they but it's not a big deal it's not it's not a this book is a no non-gender specific character like that's it's just it's just so subtle mm. it's just there They're it's just, just there. there it's not a selling point at all and it's up to the reader to decide because Paula's like I don't know who or what Charlie wants to identify as it's not important it's not it's not important and it's totally up to the reader to kind of do whatever they like, as in how it's 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 beautiful. It's really clever. Actually, it's really cleverly done because it's so subtle. It's just like you said, it's just there. And I think that's really important as well with kids. I think we're going through a very interesting, if not slightly confusing time at the moment it's it's the same with disability children need to see themselves represented they need to see themselves there was a series of resources that i did for for the publisher that i used to to work with and one of the characters i i said can we give this character a walking frame they actually in the end gave her crutches <laughs> okay. which i which i always thought oh does that actually just look like maybe she's just broken a leg and as she was um she was a piece of chalk because it was all about pens. Mm. <laughs> but but I but it, it's that you know there are children that will use a walking frame if they don't see themselves in their in a book. Yeah. How how do they? Well, where am I in that playground picture? Where am I in that family? Yeah. But yeah. if they see themselves, and it doesn't have to be mentioned, it doesn't have to be. Uh, it doesn't have to be, as you say, the thrust of the story does not have to be the disability, the gender. That doesn't have to be what it's about. They're, no. they're, they're just there. Yeah. And and then the the reader can think, oh, that's like me. Yeah. And that and that makes you feel yeah. so much better about yourself because you're included. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, and also Paula talks about leaving a digital legacy, which is slightly different to it's a little bit off topic because the digital legacy isn't necessarily book related, but a book could be part of leaving a legacy behind, which is why she wanted to write this series of books. She wanted to write these stories down so that it could be passed on from generation to generation. And Paula is just the most beautiful person you could ever meet and I've met her several times and I absolutely adore her and she's just got this lovely aura about her she's 
calming yet enthusiastic and pragmatic but yet really empathetic and she's just she's just lovely I love Paula and I'll be seeing her very soon because I'm going to another event of the Northern Last Lounge on Wednesday which I'm very excited about um, and I know there are at least three if not four more books coming out of the lounge as well that we're going to be working on which is very exciting and I'm going to be meeting a couple of those people at this event the Froggit, Tracy Horner, Alexa. I'm going to be yes. meeting her, which is yes. excellent. And uh, yeah, it's very exciting. So yes. that's really a roundup of our series six. Hopefully you'll have listened to this, made some notes with who you really want to go and listen to in full. Or the best thing to do, just listen to the whole series. Yeah, go on, go on, go on. You'll love go it. for a walk, <laughs> go for a walk or go for a drive. Have us on, listen. And like I said, the next series, series seven, is just going to be a continuous series, a mix of petty pods and full length episodes. And I know one of the people we're going to be speaking to um, is going to be a, another cracker of an episode. Yes. So watch out for us popping up on your recommended list. And also, if you do subscribe, you'll then never miss another episode. I think that's everything we need to say, isn't it, it, Alexa? I think it is. It's been really fun doing this episode. It's been, it's, you know, I've I've learned a lot talking to people and, and hearing about their writing experiences and, um, and, and it's great to spend time with Alexa. (laughs) Of course, I love spending time with my poddy. It's brilliant. So please do go and review, please, 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 if you enjoy it, we'd love it. And then watch out for series seven which will probably be starting, I would imagine, in January, but it will be sporadic. But yes. if you subscribe, you'll never miss an episode. I know. <laughs> That's everything from us. I hope you've enjoyed this series. And for now, it's a bye-bye from me. And bye-bye from me. Bye-bye. <laughs>